be talking about seismic data processing. We have seen in the first module, which is seismic acquisition, that data has to be first acquired, both refraction and reflection seismic data. Refraction seismic data precedes the reflection seismic data. Data is acquired with the objective to have a good signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio is proportional to the square root of foldage. Foldage is the number of times the subsurface point is illuminated. Now, the objective after data acquisition is to clean the data more to have a data continuity as far as acoustic impedance is con considered and also to see that this data is meaningfully interpreted for structural and stratigraphic traps. Now, our, we know our amalgamation of various layered. This layering are based on lithology by the geologist. For a geophysicist or an explorationist, it is actually understood in terms of density and velocity. Here we have the first layer where the thickness is H1 and the P wave velocity is Vp1, the S wave velocity Vs1 and rho1. Similarly, we have the second layer velocities and the density. We know the reflectivity is defined as V2 rho2 minus V1 rho1 by V2 rho2 plus V2 rho1. So we repeat it once again, V2 rho2 minus V1 rho1 divided by V2 rho2 plus V1 rho1. This gives the reflectivity. And I can repeat that reflectivity is positive, means there is a peaking. Reflectivity is a negative, that means there is a trough. In between, we have the zero crossing. Now we can see here the energy goes inside the earth after the ignition and it is captured by the geophones which is given in the symbol of green. Now there are waves which don't penetrate the earth which are lost called ear wave. We have refraction as has been shown in the figure. We have direct wave where the energy is traveling directly from the geophone, directly from the source to the geophone and then we have the reflection in the reflection, we measured the two-way time. One way is the time required for the energy to travel from the source to the reflecting boundary and then come back to the geophone. All these data were acquired in SEGD format, which is the time sequential data, the main objective of data processing. It is to convert it into trace sequential data. We also need to understand noise. Seismic noise can be either random or coherent. Coherent noise are ground roll, backscattered, multiple, sinusoidal, predictable. Methods of reduction, multi-channel filtration in TX domain, FK, which is a frequency domain, radon tra domain transformation, model-based noise elimination. And then there are random noise, non-sinusoidal, unpredictable method of reduction is CMP stacking, also, we do predictive deconvolution in the FX domain. Before we go into the flowchart of seismic data processing, which is the basic flowchart we'll talk about today, there are many modifications on the flowchart to actually remove the artifact in the data, which is the advanced processing. And anybody who is interested to understand advanced processing can consult Otto Ilma's book on seismic data processing. We also need to understand what are primaries and what are multiples. Seismic energy that are reflected only once are known as primaries. Seismic energy that has reflected more than once are known as multiples. While virtually all seismic energy involves some multiples, the important distinction is between long path and short path multiples. A long path multiplex arises as a distinct event, whereas short path multiple arise so soon after the primary that is merely adds tail to the primary. Short multiples may obscure stratigraphic details even where structural aspects are not affected significantly. The attitude of long path multiple does not represent the portion of the section associated with their arrival time. Usually long path multiple have traveled more in the seismic which is shallower part of the seismic section than primaries with the same arrival time so that they ordinarily show more normal move out and can be attenuated by common midpoint stacking. Here we see a couple of examples of multiples like ghost, simple multiple, multiple peg leg, 
and also interbed multiple seismic data processing is a set of logical operation on the input data aimed at reducing the unwanted components which is noise gathering the wanted components which is signal generating a geological meaningful subsurface structure is the final objective of seismic data processing what is a good signal elements of good signal is what makes the signal have three vital requirement good signal to noise ratio high resolving power and adequate spatial coverage of the target this is the basic flow chart of processing we have the input raw data which is the seismic data we add field geometries and acquisition parameters then we edit the data editing requires because all part of the data is not good we may require to remove some part of the data where we apply muting then we apply gain we understand that the amplitude has decayed in the deeper horizon because the energy exponentially decays so we have to have an inverse filter called the automatic gain control which is a window based amplitude enhancement filter to improve the amplitude of the deeper targets as energy moves from the source to the farthest offset the energy get decayed we also need to apply filter because all the data may not be useful to us so we have a low cut filter a high cut filter and a band pass filter visualization of the groups of cmp can be in the common offset common receiver or short gathers we have talked about the low velocity zone or the weathering zone which has been removed in seismic data acquisition if we have some component left it is called the static and we need to remove the static in the processing step velocity analysis is very important because velocity helps in doing nmo and nmo correction and also converting the time data into depth data which we have talked about in detail in a separate presentation it is followed by nmo correction and dmo correction if there is a dip in the data we once again apply residual static and we have the common mean point brute stack we filter the data once again the amount of data which is useful for meaningful interpretation is acquired from the process data we migrate the data and we stack it once again we apply gain and the final stack is made for interpretation there can be variation in this processing flow chart however this is a basic flow chart followed by everybody in the industry the first step is to convert the data from the seg d to seg y multiplex to demultiplex conversion of multiplex data to demultiplex data time sequential data is converted into trace sequential data in a multiplex data sample 1 from every channel is recorded followed by sample 2 from each channel and so on the demultiplex rearranges the configuration to have all the sample of channel 1 in sequence from time 0 to end of the record and then all the samples from channel 2 and so on the signal consists of amplitude values spaced at a certain sample interval usually 4 millisecond to obtain a certain resolution in a high resolution work a shorter sample period 1 to 2 millisecond is often used so that higher frequencies can be recorded without aliasing then the step which is required to be applied is called muting bad data is removed from the trace sequential data three types of muting is done namely head muting surgical muting and tail muting if the upper part of the record need to be removed it is known as head muting if some part of the record between two time periods so two that one window between two times then it is known as surgical muting if the end part of the record has to be removed it is known as tail muting automatic gain control is a rolling window operation AGC is a process in which the gain in each channel is controlled automatically and independently from other channel. AGC type gain functions are applied to seismic data to bring up weak signals. Gain must be used with care since it can be destroy the signal character, which is not the objective. Program gain control can be used to preserve the relative true amplitude relationship. We should understand convolution once again because convolution is a process which was utilized to convert the reflectivity into a seismic trace it reflectivity at the interfaces of different rock layers 
were converted with a wavelet which is the explosive source and which give us the seismic traces now we added noise to it and we get the seismic traces so we if you have a signal it is the input wavelet converted with the earth's reflectivity plus noise which represent the seismic trace now we would like to bring the reflectivity back we need to remove the wavelet and that is the objective of deconvolution but before that we once again talk about convolution we have the seismic impedance log which is converted into a stichogram the reflectivity functions is converted with the input wavelet or pulse which gives us a seismic trace converting rock to reflectivity all geologists will talk about lithology with that geophysicists or explorationists convert it into impedance and this impedance is converted into a stichogram where we have positive reflection as peak negative reflection as trough and in between we have the zero crossing the convolution is a process which is applied to the data in order to remove the wavelet deconvolution compress the basic wavelet in the recorded seismogram attenuates reverberations and short period multiples thus increases temporal resolution and yields a representation of the subsurface reflectivity the process normally applied before stack however it is also common to apply deconvolution to stack data deconvolution has produced seismic sections with much higher temporal resolution deconvolution sometimes does more than just wavelet compression it can remove significant part of the multiple energy from the section to understand deconvolution first we need to examine constituent elements of a recorded seismic trace the convolution model the earth is composed as i have told of layers of rock with different lithology and physical properties seismically rock layers are defined by the densities and velocities with which seismic waves propagate through them the product of density and velocity is known as seismic impedance the impedance contrast between adjacent rock layers causes the reflection that are recorded along a surface profile the recorded seismogram can be modeled as a convolution of our impulse response with the seismic wavelet the wavelet has many components including source signature recording filter surface reflection and receiver array response the earth impulse response is what would be recorded if the wavelet were just a spike that's the objective of deconvolution the impulse response comprises primary reflection reflectivity series and all possible multiples ideally deconvolution should compress the wavelet components and element multiples leaving only earth's reflectivity in the seismic trace wavelet compression can be done using an inverse filter as a deconvolution operator an inverse filter when convolved with seismic wavelet converts it into a spike when applied to a seismogram the inverse filter yields the earth's impulse response an accurate inverse filter is achieved using least square method the fundamental assumption underlying the deconvolution process is that a minimum phase data is required the issue is dealt with also in inverse filtering the next step is stacking stacking is the process of summing all the traces with a, with different offsets of single cmp that is common midpoint improve signal to noise ratio by cancelling random noise and boosting coherent signal converts a large number of pre stacked traces with different offset to zero offset section shrink data size and less computer time and cost being averaging of sorts causes loss of resolution before i go into the migration i will talk about normal move out we have seen the distance between the shot to the nearest geophone is the near offset distance from the shot to the far geophone is known as the far offset the reflection equation is given as t square is equal to t0 square plus x square by v square which is called the normal move out if we remove the offset then we will have a zero offset data however there is a move out because of the data has offset now normal move out correction is applied based on the formula which i have talked about if we have a dip then it will be represented as t square is equal to t0 square plus x square by v square cos square theta you can expand this as t square plus 
एक्स स्क्वायर बाय वी स्क्वायर माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर बाय वी स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर थेटा टी जीरो स्क्वायर प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर बाय वी स्क्वायर इज द नॉर्मल मूव आउट एंड देन वी हैव टू अप्लाई अ करेक्शन इन द डिपिंग बेड कॉल द एक्स स्क्वायर बाय वी स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर थीटा व्हिच नीड टू बी सेपरेटेड आउट एंड दिस इज व्हाट इज नोन एज द डीप मूव आउट migration is also an important phenomena in the processing step and there are many various type of migration which are done to the data seismic migration is a set of technique for transforming recorded seismic reflection data into image of reflecting boundaries in the earth's interior in simplest form in the earth's interior we have to correct certain distortion present in recorded wave field the distortion can be caused by diffraction inside the earth which scatters the incident energy to range of receiver location geometric effect caused by diffing reflectors and velocity effect which cause the seismic waves to change direction as they propagate from source to reflector to receiver migration is used to eliminate and estimate seismic velocity and to provide amplitude for rock property analysis the migration heuristic assumes the subsurface reflectors are made up of point diffractors the response of reflector to input seismic energy is the sum of responses to all the diffractors and migration transform the response to the actual reflector shape migration can be applied before the stacking which is called the pre stack migration also they are applied after stacking which is called the post stack migration to do migration to apply stacking and to understand also how to convert time into depth we require understanding of velocity velocity tomograms need to be prepared the most important velocity which we study is called the rms velocity rms velocity is given as square root of v1 square t1 plus v2 square t2 plus v3 square t3 divided by t1 plus t2 plus t3 square root in case of three layer dipping bed in three layer beds which are horizontal to each other and stacking velocity is equal to rms velocity if the beds are undipping or non dipping if the beds are dipping then stacking velocity is equal to v rms into cos theta where theta is the dip of the bed in a land seismic record we can have various type of noise like facility noise which we have seen here reverberation ground roll ear blast harmonic noise and vacant noise all these noise need to be removed from the data in order to have a meaningful interpretation once we have the data in hand we should do an interpretation in the field itself we prepare the base map which was part of seismic data processing because that was utilized to understand which shots has been shot in the previous day which shot we have accepted and which are the shot to be repeated once all the shot are blasted and all the recording are done and stacking is applied in the field to create the brute stack we have 2d data and 3d data which are in lines or cross line we can see the geophone on the top of a 2d section or the short points we understand the short point distance and the geophone distance in the y axis we have the two way time and we can see lots of acoustic impedance which are running and we need to interpret the zone of interest we can do a manual interpretation or a interpretation with the help of computer to understand how to track a horizon of interest once it is tracked in the strike line we will use one of the seed to go to the deep line in this process we will interpret both the strike line and the deep line after that we will apply the loop time method because while we interpreted the data we have found many faults and there can be cycle skip and cycle splitting so loop tie will be first done on the small loops which are there and we will see preparing pseudo sections with the help of strike line and deep lines we'll try to see how the match is if the match is not good 
we go back once again and try it from the beginning once the match is good on the smaller loops the bigger loop and the biggest loop we impose all the two way time on the short points and we try to contour them based on the contours whether it is a high or a low we understand which are the structural prospects which may be filled with hydrocarbon and also we also understand the depot centers the faults has to be understood whether they are sealing faults or leaking faults the faults which are leaking faults helps for migration of hydrocarbon from the depot center into the structures the structure should have cap the cap should not breach the fault should be then sealing and the cap if it is not breached and the structure is formed after the hydrocarbon migration has happened then it is a bald head structure there is nothing inside it whereas if the structure is formed and then the hydrocarbon went inside and then filled it and there is no way to breach the cap the structural integrity is there those are the places we look for hydrocarbon those are the places where we see the locals and that is structural interpretation in separate lectures i have told you that the easy oil are already explored structural highs and lows are the methods of the past we are looking for lenzoidal sand we are looking for channels we are looking for cotton field structure we are trying to see how this cotton field are they amalgamated or they are individual how are they spaced whether it is a low strand system track or whether it is a tst where is the maximum flooding surface these are some of the new tools which are utilized today to understand where the stratigraphic traps are where the hydrocarbons are present which are difficult to find out by simple interpretation and we have separate modules for the same which you have been taught of and we hope that with the basic understanding and seeing couple of seismic section from the marine from the shallow offshore deep offshore you will be able to understand the neritic diagram better you will be also understanding the depositional environment and depositional sands to be interpreted for finding the hydrocarbon locals thank you very much